Welcome back to the Nutri Medical Report, and one of my favorite guests to have on the program. You see him on more often is uh, the very entertaining, erudite, and uh, brilliant Dr. Ted Brower. And we're going to cover a wide range of issues today, all the way from functional epigenetic wellness to uh, the latest on the Bilderberg meeting. And I think we should start off. I'm going to get your opinion first before I do my blather. Uh, but I, people, when they're going to hear this little, uh, if you want to call it rant, Hopefully, it'll kind of give them a little different idea of the space chest of what's really going on. So, uh, Dr. Ted, tell us what you think about Bilderberg, and uh, we had a little discussion before the show, so give us your take. You know, the reality, the way I look at the Bilderberg group is this. You know, whenever they let something become this publicly exposed as far as the people who run the planet, uh, most of the time it's more obfuscation than it is reality. I think at one time there may have been some normality or some kind of planning session that was going on that was very functional with the Bilderberg group, and they may indeed pick some of the lower-level people, like who's going to be the president of the United States. But I think as far as reality, there's a much higher, much deeper plan that's being done from a satanic standpoint than from a Bilderberg standpoint that's running everything. And yeah, I, I think, think a lot of this is just obfuscation and information they're giving us to basically say, hey, look, here's a shell game. We're playing with you, and over here's a shell. But no, 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 here's really what's happening. And they simply don't want us to know what's really going on and what's really happening. And the same thing is true. I mean, a lot of times you get these breaking stories, and all these people are talking about Bilderberg, or all these people are talking about Putin, or all these people are talking about this and that. And all that stuff is real. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, all of these people do play a role in it, but a minor but, role as far as I'm concerned, because I believe that the destiny of the planet has been predetermined, and we as Christians, are the ones that are going to control it if we got together in our collective bubble and took authority over this mess. Otherwise, we're in for a real, real bad deal. And, yeah. uh, and that's what people yeah, need to yeah, understand. Yeah. The, biggest, the, the biggest reason, <clears throat> the biggest reason, Doc, that the United States is the mess that it's in right now, the biggest reason is because the Christian churches have not stood up for what they know and what they know to do, and they've compromised and they've allowed Satan to come in and fill the vacuum. And that's what's going on. Yeah, you know what I used to say when I traveled to a church, and I haven't been invited, I guess probably because of my personality. <laughs> it's so <laughs> so so entertaining, eh? Um, I confront people with the, way the, with the truth. I said the reason why the church doors are heavy is to make sure the Satan can't get out. <laughs> that's pretty. Well, you know, I, that's I don't pretty, know if Satan yeah, necessarily in the churches, uh, but I'm not sure. I'm well, sure he is. The spirit has the part. Well, no, he's here. Got to, and, and again, we told you. I've told you this on the show before. Uh, I use a little humor here. Church, and the books are closed in the church, and you can't see where the money goes. And the pastor has a lavish lifestyle, which I have no problem with the pastor being blessed. I don't have a problem with that. But if it's lavish and you don't know where the money goes, or what's being done with the money, or where the funds are being distributed, you don't see anything that's going on, and you're hearing "Give me money and you'll be blessed," but don't let's not talk about let's not talk about anything that's going on in the real world. Let's not talk about what's happening with the satanic well, that, that's agenda. What I'm saying. Let's not talk about the other dimensions. And when you when they don't want to talk about any of this stuff, then you got to take a look at them and say, you know, guys, you got to tell me the truth, or I got to go somewhere else. Well, you can go through the Old Testament, the New Testament, and you'll see all the topics the church should be discussing today and being real with the real world around them. I don't believe in the 501c3 church. <clears throat> so, for example, if I have a series of questions that I tell the deacon's board or the uh, pastor. Because they have to be there when I do a talk on pro-life. And I said, you know, I'm going to go through a series of questions. And I ask them, how many of the deacons board belong to a secret order? How many, uh, you know, funerals for a, uh, using Masonic ceremonies have they had in their church? How many women have had abortion haven't publicly repented? And how much has the church done to try to take care of the sick and elderly that don't even have somebody visiting them? If you go down through this list of questions, what you find is the church that Jesus demanded, which is basically just the body, in other words, us relating to each other, because God said, though you do it to the least of my brothers and sisters, you're doing it to me. What he wants us to be is he wants us to be the living stones to build the new Jerusalem. It's not built with stones out from heaven. It's built with us. And <clears throat> what I see happening is um, people substitute priestcraft and they substitute sacraments and ceremonies for a relationship with the Most High God. And people say, how do you pray? So I said, how do you breathe? Every pulse, every breath should be a breath that's, that's literally given over to God. And, in the, and, and you're not capable of doing good unless you consult God on every single decision you do. And people might find that extreme. I said, it's not extreme. It should become automatic like breathing and having a pulse. Uh, <clears throat> right now, the reason why, for example, we have a president trying to take uh, our freedom of religion and change it to a freedom to worship is because we, the church, have not been active. And we also often have people who, um, uh, like, for example, I'm going to mention a name here, uh, Rand Paul. I support him on most of his things, but there's a couple of things I find a little bit uh, over the top. And one of them is just a carte blanche about Israel. 
Uh, I personally think that we need to go for a much stronger stance. We need to support Israel. What we need to do is annex them. We need to make them a state so they have some federal control over them and the Joint Chiefs of Staff can call them on the mat so they don't start a nuclear war. We also need to not tolerate selling weapons to Al-Qaeda and terrorists and Muslims because Muslims, if you want to talk about a religion that's closest to Satanism on earth, it's Islam. And there's no such thing as mild, moderate, or whatever Islam. It's all right from the pit of hell. Only about 12% of Islam actually deals with religion. 88% deals with government, Sharia law, total control. It's obscene against women. Uh, it, I mean, there are some positive things. They don't want to kill the unborn. And because they won't kill the unborn and they treat the disabled and elderly reasonably, uh, God blesses them for that. Even though these people that are in Islam are you know, literally following a sect. I mean, you can, you can read, for example, you remember Solomon Rushdie wrote a, a, a book about what every imam knows <clears throat> called the Satanic Verses. These are a dialogue between so-called Muhammad Think, he was thinking at first maybe he was talking to God, but actually he might have been Satan, but you know, it, you can sort it out yourself kind of thing. I mean, literally, this is in the Quran, and people don't understand, and it says in the Quran, well, if I said nice things in the Quran here in the earlier shuras, don't worry, the later shuras tell us to go and behead those darn Christians and Jews because they're profane. We need to get a life, and we don't. We have a weak president, a, a bisexual sock puppet, drug addict, who when he's away from his wee-wee, his teleprompter, he can't say, have a straight thought in his head, and, and they won't even allow photographs. They will not even allow photographs of him blundering or video because he's, a, he's a, just a, a marketing mess now. <clears throat> so here, here's what I, my, my view is, you know, it's a hold, hold back, Deagle, hold back. No, I'm not going to hold back on Bilderberg. Bilderberg is a marketing meeting, which is why it's a damn public, to what I call the mega minions of Satan, the billionaire club, and the reason why it's public is to try to convince, number one, us, the public, that they're so damn powerful that we should just submit. And number two, that they're so powerful they're still in control, which is also crap. The fact is, the billionaires are playing around with the world economy now because have derivatives so screwed up. They can't make money even on the derivative bubble economy. They're completely out of control. They're trying to convince themselves they can start a nuclear war and that anybody will survive coming out of their hotels maybe a century or two from now from underground. When we know the actual psychological and psychiatric studies are, within 30 days, 60% of people that are put in these underground facilities that are civilians will commit suicide. So have a nice day, billionaires. Go down with your grand pianos and your DVDs and your hospitals and your underground shopping centers. In 60 days, a lot of you are going to kill yourselves because you're going to go. You're going to lose your mind like the Morlocks of the you know 1980 of the time machine, locked down under uh, in these vast cavernous cities called hotels for 80,000 years, which is what is in the book. Okay, so it's a marketing meeting, and the reason why it's so public. So I personally don't care if someone isn't surfed out of the meeting because they're four inches taller and they don't have a beard. I'm personally not interested in whatever their policies are because whatever they are, there's here's the hierarchy of how things work in this world. And if you haven't heard this before, you're hearing it today. Satan controls this world. Anybody who doesn't know that now, you better listen up. Under Satan, there's a Druidic council, the ancient ones. They run planet Earth, Earth Inc. under Satan, period. And in that council are a number of top. Their current Pope Francis is one of that 12 council. Okay? And these are the council members, including the 13th man, who's called the Pindar. And his title means literally the phallic symbol, the penis of the dragon. That's what it means. He's the guy, the CEO, that sits in the top chair there of the council. And under them are all these characters like the Vatican, which actually controls the so called Sabbatean Jewish bankers. And by the way, all this foolishness about about Putin. He's a bad man. He's, it's from Time Magazine, it says, you know, premier, president, and then the remarks through them in Time Magazine, it says, czar. It's all for public consumption. He's a player. Get a life out there, people. It's a marketing meeting. They just want to convince you they're all powerful. They want to convince themselves they're still in control. That's all it is. Back in a moment. So, Dr. Ted, hearing that little uh, blurb there, uh, and again, that's just a little intro, I, I want people to understand what's going on, is the globalists are trying to market to their mega minions, that are the sons of mammon, the billionaire club, that they're still in control. 
And these idiot billionaires like Ted Turner and George Soros and so on, the guy that was going around catching, grabbing the Jewish gold teeth together to put them in containers for the Nazis and said it was the most glorious time of his life. He's the guy that put Mr. Obama Nation into power. And Obama is such a narcissist. They will only put in, I'm going to say this as an absolute now because I've seen it long enough to see this is what happened. The powers that be will only put in now and into the future someone who can be what's called a multiple personality disorder avatar minion like Obama. They won't put in, and this is my guess, they will not put in uh, Hillary Clinton. She's so evil, even the demons can't control her. That's <laughs> true. She's so evil, <laughs> when they shove a steel rod up inside Mr. Muammar Gaddafi, she cackled like the Witch of the West, it's melting, melting. It was unbelievable. I thought, oh my God. When I met her, I met her and Bill Clinton back at Dakota Ridge High School, and they brought in Marine One helicopter, and I was supposed to, uh, to spend, I spent a couple hours with them. And I bet Bill, and he's the kind of guy, you go and sit with a six pack and you go in the boat and you get some beer and chew the fat and he's an old boy from the south. I never got a really I got a creepy feeling, but I got a feeling that he could he could have a leak in your socks, stab you in the back and shake your hands at the same time. Okay? <laughs> that's the kind of guy that's the kind of guy in other words, you can't trust him, but you don't feel this kind of revulsion. He's like a, a puppy. A sneaky puppy, a bad puppy, will probably, you know, dump on your bed, but no, it didn't scare me. I walked up to Hillary Clinton, put my hand forward, held her hand. It was like holding death. It was like there was a, a event horizon of evil there. It was so overwhelming. And of course, I have second sight because I've died at birth in eight and a half. I didn't see a diminutive, pant-suited, pink pant-suited, middle-aged female with a stare of a Draco reptilian monstrosity. No, I saw a 16-foot Draco reptilian that looked like a right from the bowels of Hades. And it looked straight at me and it was, you can see me dripping evil. This woman is the most evil person I have ever personally met on planet Earth in 62 and a half years. She's so evil, there's no way they're going to let her be president. She might be behind the scenes <laughs> doing stuff. There's no way. They have to have somebody they can control because the six guys or five guys, whatever, the fellows on the, on the Druidic Council, they got to take orders from the big guy, Lucifer, Satan. Beelzebub, Zeus, whatever his name is. But you know, it's so bad. She's so bad. It's like she was already down in hell, and they poked a hole in hell just to get rid of her. Now they don't know what to do with her. Well, her name is not Hillary. It's actually Lilith. You know. <laughs> no, that Lilith is yeah. That's the first Eve. I mean, you, most people don't yeah, even know I'm, about I'm, that. I'm talking about, yeah, I'm, I'm, know you're talking about with that. Yeah, I know. I'm talking about the the one that they, they say Satan's wife. His name was Lilith too, by the way. That's that's. Oh, I didn't uh, know that. Uh, yeah, interesting. Eh? Anyway, so the <laughs> the point is. This is all smoke and mirrors of Bilderberger. Any meeting that gets this public and gets all this public attention, they want you to face, to look at the next shell game. They want you to think, yeah, what are these guys going to do next to the economy? What, what are they going to prosecute? I'll tell you what they're going to prosecute. They're going to try to convince us that the only way to get safety in the world is to partition the state of Israel, to give a biometric authentication currency where they have total control, and every dollar of any currency, uh, every currency in the world is pegged to this international new f world reserve currency, which is a basically a reworking of the, the City of London Fed Reserve currency, you know, the Queen Beatrix of the Le Netherlands, who was the chairwoman for many years, from the Netherlands, <clears throat> with her bee-like hairdo, you know, because remember now, those little symbols that are inside the Ark of the Covenant, remember what they are? They have hemorrhoids that are gold, gold hemorrhoids, believe it or not. They have bees, and they have the Rod of Aaron, and they have the the uh, two tablets of the of the uh, Ten Commandments. Do you know there were golden hemorrhoids inside the uh, the ark? No, why were I didn't see that. I haven't seen that in the scripture. You, know, you will if you actually go to type in and do a little search in your Bible. Hemorrhoids. Those are the hemorrhoids because what the, God defeated the enemy by giving them real bad hemorrhoids. They ended up <laughs> with a bowel infection. Believe it or not, in other words, God will do what he has to do in order to take down the enemy. We just have to start moving in power. And the first thing we need to do is tell the truth. I am not glorifying the Bilderberg meeting. I'm not going to talk about who's saying this or that. I don't care what their policies are. It's all marketing to each other because they're like, they're like wild dogs running around trying to grab a piece of meat, trying to convince each other that they're still in control. And there's an enemy coming in, i.e. God and his angels, and the informed public, which is the Christians, we are the all-powerful ones. We are the sons and daughters of the Most High. We just have to stop being whiners and pick up our scepter. It doesn't matter if we die, by the way. 
in the process. We are all powerful in infinity, eternity. And here on earth, God wants to have a people that still worship him long after these idiots are gone. <clears throat> and they will be gone. They looked at the, his history. Like, we're going to quote, the term, modern term they use is remote viewing. <laughs> they remote viewed the future and they said, oh, we're not written into the next chapter. Their book two doesn't include us on the script. We lost our contract. You know when these miniseries are on and they kill off some of the senior people in the movie or the series, miniseries? And Satan says, I'm not in there. What happened? My contract get cut? How come we don't have any minions anymore? What's going on here? Where's my mammon? He's my senior god, demigod that keeps these guys in control by giving them all this phony smoke and mirrors garbage called money. Now it's electronic money. You know, it's divots in some supercomputer. I just, I, I really want people to get a reality check now and realize just how ripe the abscess is in the body politic of the world. And those people, including the regular and the alternative media who focus on what are they saying? Who's doing what? Who got beat up? Who got killed? Where are they having the media? How come we couldn't, you had to go this way or that way in order to hear the little squeaking of these mega billionaire minions? And above them, it would be like the screw tape letters. Remember that? Screw tape letters? I can give you, yeah, yeah. I'll just give you some words now, Bilderberger. Satan, we have 300 people trying to storm the gates to get into the Bilderberger. But let's summon them in so they can think that what we're doing, we're really still in control. Yeah. And when they say a few policies, they'll say, see, see, this is what they want to do to us. Be very fearful. Be fearful because they're all powerful. These morons are shrinking down and you can only see their eyelids looking over the edge of their car window with their bulletproof uh, limousine because they don't want to see that you're going in and you're an armored personnel carrier like they brought Hillary in 2007 to the back of the Bilderberger meeting because this prime, you know, this, this, this prime uh, queen of darkness, you know, what people no, need I, to start... I, no, I, I don't, I just, you know, yeah, I remember, you know, it's interesting to me, remember Jerry Falwell? He had yeah. an interesting tape, and you guys can watch it online if you want. This is very, very important. Everybody listens to me. It was called The Clinton's Circle of Power, and he had this video that he did, which exposed over 100 deaths associated with the Clinton administration, including Vince Foster. Well, you and know what they call you, that? You, you, you know, you know you what they call that? You can watch it online for free. And it was yeah. interesting, because I remember when she ran for president a few years ago, when she was announced her candidacy, she, she had an interesting thing, because she hated Jerry Falwell. And I remember he got on his TV show, and he pointed at the camera, and he went A, B, C. Anybody but Clinton. And Bill, he was dead a few weeks later. And, right. uh, you know, I thought that was very interesting, the timing yeah, yeah, of his yeah. death. But Do the you know reality what they call is, that? I mean, he was the yeah. one telling the truth. He was one of the only people in the Christian community that was speaking the truth and telling the truth. And uh, exactly. it was pretty interesting that he was actually that powerful to do that. Yeah, yeah. But, that, that, yeah. but watch that video, the Clinton Circle of Power, and it will shock you as to what he did in the broadcast that he put out on national exactly. TV yeah. as a... You follow me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's only icing. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back. And uh, by the way, it, it, this doesn't just deal with uh, geopolitical issues or spiritual. Uh, in this show, you're, we're going to be moving you into a zone that goes way beyond coast to coast radio, way beyond any TV show or the twilight zone. We're going to take you to the reality zone, which, by the way, is in the Bible. The Bible is the biggest conspiracy theory book in the world, and it's written by an author called God. God exists in the past, present, and the future. He's laughing right now. He's got a spanking sense of humor because he knows these morons running around at Bilderberger meetings and so on and the people that are trying to create smoke and mirrors to convince themselves they're still in power or to frighten us into submitting. That's what they're trying to do. And <clears throat> you made a comment that you wanted me to clarify something, uh, uh, Dr. Ted. Go, what was that? Well, I want you to talk about what's going on with the methane expulsion and the, and the, and the up, up under the North Pole and the oh, okay. here, methane, okay. how they're being released. Mm -hmm. And I want you to tell the folks what's going on right now okay. as far as, you know, what the truth is as far as okay. that this thing, uh, that this whole thing. Yeah, go over what we just I'll, want to I'll, 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 back it, I'll back it up a bit. Uh, I'll back it up a bit. Now, firstly, Moses was the most remarkable intellect of his time. He would be like uh, putting Leonardo da Vinci, Albert Einstein, uh, 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 the uh, the uh, the great intellects of Germany. In fact, what's his name? Goethe, Johann Goethe. Uh, all his brain. Uh, 
Gert Gerta, yeah, right? Put all these people together, you got Moses. He was that remarkable. He was a physician, he was a warrior, he was an alchemist. He knew all the ancient histories. He was taught to actually be the leader of all the high priesthood. The regular son, Ramesses II, was like an inbred, subhuman kind of mess. Okay, Ramesses II, who is the biological son of Ramesses I. His, his so called, you know, stepbrother. What happened is that Moses was taught by the high priest what happened in the ancient world. Those pyramids were not built by Egyptians. That's correct. They were built by Atlanteans, okay? We know the actual salt that's inside various chambers inside the pyramids that it was underwater at one time and it was salt that was deposited after the water eventually evaporated after many, many years possibly because it was closed in centuries. Now those, those pyramids were that old. They're that old, and the Sphinx is at least thirteen to 14,000 years old. Well, the very first thing that I was told when I was security cleared at Q-Level to take care of employees working at U.S. Space Command, Strategic Defense, and Star Wars is the Director of Space Command said, in the underground city, cut several miles down, after we went to the media center, 440-seat media center run by former employees of Disney Corporation so they could show all their fancy media, digital media. You wouldn't believe all the stuff that we have. We've spent not trillions, but quadrillions of dollars on crazy stuff like off-world space platforms, entire city on the moon, colony on Mars. And he said to me, and the other doctor was with me, we control every cubic centimeter of space between here and Mars. I said, you mean here and the moon? Because I said, well, even to the moon, I could figure maybe they'd... And he got real angry with me. He said, no, we're telling you straight up because you're going to freak out unless you listen to me. And we're going to tell you what's really going on. And the first thing he told me about was the Dark Knight satellite, which is larger than our space station by quite a large margin, and it's inside what's called Zone 3 of the Van Allen Radiation Belt. And it's in polar orbit. And at that time in 1995, 1994, we'd only achieved polar orbit uh, a couple years earlier with some of our little tiny satellites about the size of a basketball. Because it's not easy to get polar orbit. So this satellite's in polar orbit and it's been going up there. And I said, well, how long has it been there? He said, we estimate between 13 and 35,000 years it's been up. Wow. Okay. Now tell now. me about that black object in space that's in that polar orbit, that black satellite. That, that's called the, they have actually been out to, the, to it and visited it. I don't have any word if they ever got inside it. It all is totally man-made or highly technology made. The fact is, it's real. We have not only... Uh, and by the way, I mentioned this, and sometimes it sounds so sci-fi, it sounds like, yeah, you're crazy, you're crazy. Uh, no, this is firsthand. I took care of the pilots flying, for example, out of uh, Peterson and Buckley Air Force Base. They were flying the Hercules C-130s, pushing out the robotic drones with the uh, nanoparticle thorium, barium, and aluminum salts. I've talked to Dr. Isley, physicist who founded the World Constituent Parliament Association. I know these things firsthand, not secondhand or from somebody's journalistic article, Okay. What we're dealing with here in this world is we have, and I also took care of the team, by the way, that went down to McMurdo Bay in Antarctica, not only for our regular telescopes, but our Pi Meson scope, our X-ray telescopes, and our other deep space objects looking for the approach of the Red Dwarf, otherwise known as Nibiru, Heraclitus, the Destroyer, the Winged Serpent God, all kinds of bad names, because Moses knew about this, and when it passed by the Earth, and it has a magnetic field 200 times the power of the Sun, which is only about 20% of the sun's mass, but it's very tiny. And these red dwarf stars don't burn themselves out. So a regular star like our yellow dwarf will last about 10 to 12 billion years. A red dwarf can last 100 trillion years. And when is it and supposed to come back through again? Now. I know, now is the next few years, I don't know. I don't have enough data to know exactly, but some of the signs are, when you see hyperelliptical comets, like the ones that have been passing by the Earth, like linear last year, uh, these comets have never entered the inner solar system. They came from the Oort clouds, 0. 0.73 light years out. That's a long way now, out. Is, is it this red dwarf that's heating up the entire solar system around us? Yes, it is. is. Yeah, causing the, and yeah. is that what's causing yeah. the methane release? Yes, it is. And what it's doing, you see, you have to look at the structure of the mantle in the area of the Earth. There's a solid core, then there's a liquid core around it, and that creates the magnetic field, the liquid core moving around the solid core. Then you have the mantle. And believe it or not, in the mantle, it has structures like arteries and veins where magma goes through, and there's solid areas. And believe it or not, there's more water in the mantle of the earth than all the oceans on the earth. That's why when the Bible says, and the waters of the great deep, and the waters above, you know, they're talking about the water that's in the mantle of the earth that happened with the flood because of the breakup of the continents. Okay? Mm. And that happened, by the way, when this object passed at the time of the floods of Noah. The same object passed by the earth 
And again, it's usually three times it's the worst disaster for some reason or other. But the time when it passed Thera, which is the volcanic island in the eastern Mediterranean blue, and the debris field fell on Egypt, which is why when they went to the land of Goshen, they were saved because they were not in the line of fire of the debris field. Every one of the plagues of Egypt were related to telluric currents and other things because the plagues drove the animals out of the ground because they were being electrified <laughs> or were caused by the tail of this of this object because Nibiru, and this is with Velikovsky's research as well, who by the way was collaborated by Albert Einstein and others, it's predicted that it has a tail of billions of miles long of iron dust or dust that's magnetized. And so around the world you can see right now rivers and area streams where we pass through little swifts of this that are actually turning the rivers red. And they're turning it red because there's iron dust falling from the tail of Nibiru. All right? Okay. That's why when you see these all over the world, you know, you see them in Scotland, you'll see it. I say, why are they turning red? So they're this is what red. the elite are planning for, and that's why they build these deep underground bunkers, be there for That's a right, long because time. they're not. I, I'm, listen, I'm a nuclear expert. The first study I did, helping my colleagues, was to take cells and, uh, and small animals and expose them to radiation for a project for DARPA and the uh, U.S. military back in 1972, 73. That's a long time ago. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Now, that was a classified project, and the cell biologists, by the way, they were our bosses, the PhDs running it, they all died within a year of very unusual circumstances. They wanted to shut the dam up because they were creating drugs and or nutraceuticals to protect against ion damage and cellular damage so they could have U.S. military troops operational on the ground, boots on the ground, within two days of a nuclear war, not two weeks. And they succeeded. We were testing butyl hydroxytoluene, uh, various tocopherols, all kinds of different things, natural and synthetic. Okay, so when in 1981, Paris Kidd and Steve Levine, who runs Allergy Research Group, who was the head professor of molecular biology at UC Berkeley, he knew about my research because I'd been communicating with him for years, and he asked me to review his book on molecular biology and free radicals. I knew about free radicals because it was classified 10 years before he even wrote his book. Okay? So this is not secondhand, okay? You're talking to a prescient world expert on these things. And I can tell you what's coming. And I don't know when it is, by the way, but we can see some signs that are looking really ugly. A nuclear war, you only need two weeks, two weeks in a bunker with food and water, and you're fine. We saw the survivors from Nagasaki and Hiroshima from the other side of a big church or building. They didn't get turned into a kind of a, you know, like a laser stamp where they just were turned to dust and then burned into the side of the building. They were fine if they didn't drink black rain, which is the rain that fell down afterwards. They often did, didn't have any problems at all. So. The nuclear war is very survivable, but whatever's coming is a lot worse. And that's why these maniacs don't care what they do with the economy or anything else. If they say Armageddon and a nuclear war is just icing on the cake. Welcome back. And, uh, you know, I think people need a pure spiritual prep. Um, since January, I've had, I've been uh, significantly what I call you know, like the ancient prophets, they they grieve in sackcloth and ashes. And I am grieving every literally day. I am grieving with the grief that goes to my bone marrow. I am literally, the, the insomnia, the continuing images, what I see coming is so horrendous. I, some nights I just, I can't even cry myself to sleep. Because the people well, don't no, want to believe and, it. And, and, they don't the want to believe it. it they, that as long as we have faith in Christ Jesus, as long as we know that we've got a right. soul tie with Almighty God because we're saved through the blood covenant we have through Jesus, none of it really matters because, you know, here the thing, no, I, 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 I told my family this morning, we prayed this morning in our prayer time, and I told my, my, my kids, they were all in there with me, and I said, I said, my mom is dead, my dad is dead, my grandfathers are dead, my grandmothers are dead. I said, everybody's gone on my side of the family, except for the relatives that we have left over in Germany and a few up in Iowa. And I said, the reality is this. I said, we're not going to be here forever. And I said, we have to realize that this is not the real thing for yeah. us. And all it is is just a big obfuscation hologram is all this thing is. Uh, well, and we have to understand see, that we're not going to be here for long. Yeah, Ted, that, that's very comforting for me because, you know, when God sent me back from the, you know, from the, the gates of heaven, and he told me, he said, at the time of the end, you will know and you will tell my people. Mm -hmm. I know my days are drawing to an end soon. Well, I hope not, Doc, but you know, I hope not. It, and, I'm t and what I'm trying to tell people is I grieve not for myself, for, for those that won't listen. 
That's right. They want to waste time with them, Hahnemann attacks. They want to focus it some more on like Obama or the next president who might be a Republican who might be worse than Adolf Hitler. They don't understand that beyond above this is this Druidic Council and Satan himself. They think this is just a big joke. They say, quote, conspiracy theory. And that, it, that it's fun to poke uh, at people who are trying to open their eyes to say, do you understand what you are, what kind of being you are? Do you understand the mathematics of spirituality and the nature of truth and reality in the universe? Do you know that everything is scamtastic? Do you know that the churches won't get real? Jesus said, I just, I don't want to tithe, I want you. I want you to relate to me, I want you to call me, I want you to read the book and then let the Spirit, the Spirit, His Spirit, talk to you to get you to do something. So when you're to the checkout and someone raises the issue about their daughter going to get an abortion, you're going to open your damn mouth even if you're going to lose an employee or piss off a friend or relative. You're going to start taking action, just like I recently saw a clip, and thank God, you know, the, we got Pope Francis, who's not a Christian, okay? But the bishops and the people that put out this video clip from the Catholic Church, I am so proud of them as Christians, saying about the sanctity of marriage and the family, this video clip, which i got to post up the link to it. And they say how, you know, and they show this woman going into the voting booth of how this November election coming. It will be irrelevant being a Christian in America in the very near future if we don't stand up and speak out. Well, Obama, well, you won't be allowed uh, to be. You won't be allowed to yeah. be. But real quick, this is something I want to tell everybody. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's that way already in Canada. As far as it's, our, our new book, it, Break Through Health, go to 10foods.com, 10foods.com for my book, my latest break book, Break Through Health. Now, everybody else, listen to me for a second. Number one, go to Dr. Deagle's website, Nutramedical Med website, get his water filters, get his supplements, get his survival supplies, get all of that stuff from him, and realize that he's here to help you, that these, these shows that he does are not free, and you've got to support what he does, because he's telling you the truth. To the best of his knowledge, the best of my knowledge, we're telling you the truth. I'm not saying that we're always 100% right, but I'll say one thing. We're doing the best we can to tell the people the truth, regardless of the consequences to us personally. And, and the, th the thing about it is, is, if you don't know Jesus Christ right now, I've got a, I've got a special feeling right now for everybody who's listening. You've got to learn who he is. You know, you got to say, Lord, please prayer. forgive me for the sins that I've committed. I accept you, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. Please come into my life. Please change me. I accept you as my Lord and Savior and my soon coming King. You've got to believe that and you've got to accept Christ. Because, guys, when you're on that death table and you're dying and you're unconscious and you can't do that, you've got a mess on your hands. And the reality is this it's better to do it now than to do it later because we live in a supernatural world. We are supernatural, spiritual beings experiencing a physical existence and a skin suit that's in a holographic projection. This thing that we're in is not even real, and that's the right. whole thing, is the obfuscation of what's really going on. And like Dr. Deagle says, everybody gets caught up in all of this junk, and everybody forgets about who their power lies with, who Jesus Christ is, who Yeshua is, and what he'll do for you, and how he'll change you, and how he'll protect you, and how he'll protect your family. And when you pray every morning, you pray with your family, you pray with your children, you pray out loud, and you tell God what you want, you don't ask him not to kill you, you ask him to protect you, and you remind him of his word that he's never seen that he said he'll never see the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread and he will do what he says in his word every single time and he likes it when you do that he likes it when you remind him of his word because he knows that you're an obedient child and you want to be with him and you want to do what's right in his eyes and even solomon who went over to satanism who came back to god hopefully at the end like it says in the book of ecclesiastes he knew in the very end he said the only thing that matters is to serve god and obey his commandments because this is the sole duty of man and if you don't understand that, you're not going to be prepared for the next life. And sorry, I started preaching a little bit there, but Doc, but they no, got to that, know That's the important. Truth. That's really important. I think, uh, you know, and part of that, by the way, is taking care of your body. Your body is your temple. That's right. And our temple is being destroyed. By That's the right. temple is being torn down by genetically right. modified foods, by nanoparticles in the upper atmosphere, by scalar radiation. I managed to catch Andy, the guy from San Diego Gas and Electric that reads my meter. First time I managed mm -hmm. to talk to the guy, I spent 20 minutes giving him a deagle rant on smart meters and you can tell uh, at the end of it his eyes were getting bigger and bigger and bigger and pretty soon they're going to like pop out of his head he was like oh, wow i didn't know that you know, people don't understand that if they listen to this program and they actually i tell people there's two witnesses your intellect which god gave you and he's giving you the spirit of the most high liberty to confirm so those two witnesses if they agree after you get silent and say god after I did all my Google research, I listened to this program, I listened to other shows, I want to plumb the truth. Just like an issue like Bilderberg. Should I take Bilderberg seriously or their policies? Or should I listen to the perspective that Deagle mentioned? And then take it in prayer to God and say, God, what does this mean? It means that they are so out of control at this meeting in Bilderberg, which is why it's public, 
that they don't know what the hell to do next. They know this uh, Nibiru star is coming in. They know that things are not going to be, as I say, Armageddon and nuclear war is just icing on the cake. And biological weapons, what's coming is a heck of a lot worse. And the problem is, without the spirit of the Most High and cities of refuge, and I'm not talking about underground little, it says in Revelation 6 that they shall hide themselves in the rocks and the deep places of the earth from the face of the Holy One. They're not going to be hidden. You can't hide yourself from God. You can't. God sees everything. He knows everything. He literally exists in the past, present, and future. To him, there's no such thing as dimensions or time. He's beyond them. His intellect is so vast and infinite, and his ability to create love and harmony and so on is so is so infinite. All he wants us to do is accept that. That's Just right. accept it. Just accept it and say, God, I know there isn't any good that comes from anybody else but you. There isn't any wisdom that comes from anybody else but you. There isn't any safety except it comes from you, not from the mind of man or technology of Satan or some off-world, you know, evil civilization that's communicating with us to give another weapon of mass destruction like the Star Wars Death Star. You know, come on. What we people have to understand is that mankind, like, was not going to follow the pathway of Ray Kurzweil and the transhumanist. We're not going to merge with technology like the uh, singularity and all this stuff and then live as an echo in a cybernetic supercomputer. That's right. We are a spirit being that exists in hyperdimensional space that has a pod connected through the pineal gland to what I call a sensory suit, which is our body. It is like That's the husk right. of a larvae about to become a butterfly, which is an awake soul that knows the vision of the Most High God, picks up their scepter, man and woman, and becomes a son or daughter of the Most High, and literally becomes a child that can hear and do the will of God in this realm, the lake of fire, because we are in the lake of fire. Sorry to bubble, burst your bubble out there. This is as close as you're ever going to get if you're saved to hell. And this is the lake of fire. I mean, you go out 300 miles it, you, you, you think about it, Doc. <laughs> almost 60 million abortions. I mean, if you're thinking, if you hear what we're saying right now, you listen to me for a second. Sixty million abortions in the United States. This isn't that happy, is. happy here. This is a, this is a whole demonic oh, sacrifice no, no. place for Lucifer that, no, no. in the United States. Not just here. You don't think this the, is as close to hell as you're going to get if you're a crusade. Yeah, you, I don't know what you think hell must be like. Killing the sixty million babies. I don't think it must get much worse than that. After inauguration, the very first act that Obama did before he went to supper was to pass to repeal the the hold on the Montreal Protocol which meant that America paid for abortions in his so-called home country of Kenya. Unbelievable. This is a sock puppet of Satan himself. That's right. And no one gets into power unless they are a dissociative identity disorder MPD individual. As I say, Hillary's so evil they can't avatar her. I believe that. Her bowels are infested with legions of the highest order demonic horde from the bowels of Hades. I'm sure even Satan cringes when he sees her. That's how bad she is. <laughs> and she's super intelligent and unbelievably what we call liquid, dark, majestic evil of the most vile kind. The sulfur will burn your nostrils spiritually. That's how evil she is. They're even Doc, frightened you, of her. Doc, why don't you tell us how you really think about her? <laughs> I won't be voting for her if they try to put her on. I won't either, Doc. God, that's about the best description I've ever, ever heard of. You need, to, you need to write that down and post it. <laughs>